everybody, and welcome to the studio. It's a cloudy day, so we're inside the garage and we're painting. So I already have my canvas, it's been prepared with a liquid white, and let's just get started. I have uh, some alizarin crimson, or sorry, this is uh, Indian yellow, and I'm just going to start doing the X stroke down here. I'm just going to try to use up all that Indian yellow that's on my brush. So just try to sort of a nice light golden color. Spread it out as much as I can. Just a little bit the color. And then I'm going to add some yellow over. A little bit more of a kind of golden color. And I'm just sort of going to kind of bring those two private colors together. And then just start to start to go over the whole thing and just kind of blend them. And we're making kind of like a autumn sunset kind of sky today. Just a nice autumn sunset. Blend that all together. Then with a clean brush, I got lots of them. Maybe this one's going to be maybe some black. Just a little bit of black. You've got to be careful because black and yellow is going to make uh, it's going to make it green. So deep down inside, these black colors are really just really deep blues. Just a little bit of black. Kind of black and gold. And then clean brush to sort of blend them together gently. You don't want to make it clean. And the whole time it's mixing with the liquid white that we have and it's making the two colors nice and soft. painting on some trees that I'm going to add. We're just going to go into some sap green and some alizarin crimson. And that's going to make basically a brown color because red and green make brown. And I want it just a little bit more towards the green side. And I'm going to start adding some trees. So the trees I'm going to make by sort of starting at the bottom and just sort of push Push up, basically. And by starting at the bottom, I'm getting the heaviest load onto the paintbrush. And then I'm starting to get lighter as I go to the top. All kinds of just like nice little trees. Think of like a nice sunset that you may have seen sometime. And that'll, that'll carry you through this. And then just the bottom part, just a give some shadow to the trees. 
just using their own page. And this makes our own shadow. And then with a different brush, we're going to start highlighting some of these. We're going to highlight with sort of a mix of, well, let's take a, some of the cut green we have, and then just look at some of the different yellows. So it's sort of like a light yellow kind of green color. Just how do you push all that hard? Being careful to kind of leave a lot of your dark spots open. Changing the color going into Sometimes maybe more of the, the yellow that we had. It's fall after all in this scene, so yellow leaves wouldn't be exactly a strange thing to see. Just changing the color as it sort of go along. Those are just some background sheets. We're going to add a little bit of detail in here. So just some brush thinner, some black and brown, black and Van Dyke brown, just going to go together with the brush thinner. And it's going to make a super, super thin like ink. Sort of Fruits are these really strange Japanese fruits we have. Um, they're orange. They look like oranges, but that's literally where the similarity sort of ends. 
their flesh is really kind of different. Um, their taste, they're not sour, they're not like a citrus fruit at all. And at our old studio, we actually used to have a really big talking tree just sort of growing outside. Probably enough of that for now. So at this stage, what you want to do, at this stage, what you want to do is you want to start um, paying attention to sort of the lay of the land, the sort of different shapes and slopes that you have. And start adding some highlights. This is just liquid white mixed in with that original sort of green color that I had. And it's that nice soft grass. But I'm paying attention to sort of the shape of the land that I already have. And I'm just sort of tapping and following along with those sort of tapping it in. If it's not sticking very well, just go into your liquid water. Anything you don't like, you can always just sort of change as you go along. Back into that dark brush for you. Let's do something kind of fun. Got some water. That's not pretty water. That's really kind of dark, gross, kind of swamp water. Kind of water we're going to work with. And that was just the, uh, the browns that we had. Blend it all out. Then take this. Sort of lay out your water. The reflection sort of almost thought to be a little bit bigger as they get toward you and then a little bit smaller. Just add more, just add more grass here. Let's uh, shake this up a little bit better. You're basically free to constantly be changing your mind like this with this kind of wet on wet painting. That's something you're totally allowed to do. You know, 
sand brush. Let's get into some umber, burnt umber, and some of the burnt umber and the sand dyke brown. I just want to start. Adding in just a little bit of mud. You usually find a lot of mud next to water. There were supposed to be some hockey trees, and I thought that they would be over here, but then I decided I wanted to add this river. I have to figure that out. So let's figure some of that out. Now, over here we have to have a way to get over there. So we're just gonna add in a bridge. Just some brown. Maybe even maybe just gonna cut out the shape of this bridge. Maybe it's all just goes out. Maybe 
Maybe the bridge has its own private shadow. Just sort of underneath. So now we have a way to get over there. Next thing we're going to do is we'll do that big black brush. Mix up all the dark colors, the black, the brown, the phthalo green, the crimson, all of them. And here comes our great big cocky tree. And of course, with the cocky tree comes the land that the cocky tree lives on. So now you can see how that old bridge is sort of disappearing back there. We, add, we need to add, we need to add those cocky trees. So we're going to make orange. So orange is just, oh, yellow and red. And mix it together until you get sort of the color you want. And this is going to be a nice technique for getting all kinds of different fruit. So it doesn't matter if you end up painting an apple tree or if you end up painting you know, a banana tree or something. Just mix up the color and the fruit. The way we do trees is we kind of do trees like sandwiches. Actually, before I even add the fruit, let's just add, let's just add just a few little branches. Let's add them with a liner brush. A little bit of brush there. Now let's add those copy trees. So here I have a silver brush. I haven't really used this before because my silver brush is super old. I need to buy a new one. And I'm just going to go into the silver brush and I'm going to add little tiny circles. Hopefully, it'll be a little brush thinner. If you find you touch, if you touch, and your brush comes away with the color that was already on the canvas, that means you need to add brush in. Pay attention to how things are in nature. The reality of these fruits is you know, they don't sort of, actually, this is a bad example, they don't sort of evenly distribute. They sort of go in clusters. So there'll be parts of the tree that have none, and there'll be parts of the tree that have, like, a lot all in one place. And different trees are kind of different in the way they produce their different fruits. Cocky trees do it like this. 
much, but any mistakes that we have, we can always cover up. Just cluster the fruit here and there. That might be enough. That might be enough for today. You know, we're going to highlight. So, the khaki fruits we added are already quite thin with the paint. So, we definitely need to use brush thinner or liquid white. I like the tree. So what this is going to do is, you know, I like the tree. It's going to hide some of our khaki fruit so that they're hiding in the tree. And this is sort of where you get to pick and choose what you like in your painting. If you don't like something, just cover it up. It's not a big deal. That's our first khaki tree. Time for a second one. So with khaki trees, you almost see them in two different ways. Uh, you see the one where they still have their foliage and they're quite, you know, they're a bit of a brown green kind of color. And you'll sometimes also see them where they are sort of without any branches at all. So we're just going to do one that's kind of like that. This is just a fan brush and basically all the dark colors I have. Sometimes the people who own cockade trees, I mean, sometimes those people, I think they must do some kind of 
cutting of the tree because a lot of the time they'll be cut or split really, really low. And I think that's just the method to make a tree that produces much more fruit. So you'll see these trees, and they'll have like very few limbs left on them. Bunch of sort of wild branches coming off in all directions. Okay. And that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show the two kinds. basically what you end up seeing in the countryside in Japan in the fall is these happy trees at very different stages of leaves falling off. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could spend a lot of time using like a really small brush, maybe even doing the back painting, and then adding the trees afterwards when you're done with oil or acrylic. But to me, it's just, it's a little bit more satisfying sometimes to just start and end a painting. and not spend a really large amount of time on something. Paint the way you want to paint. If you want to spend a lot of time on one thing, you're more than welcome to do that. To me, I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on certain things. actually entirely the reason why I started oil painting. I used to do different kinds of art, uh, a lot of anime style art when I first came to Japan because I was making flashcards for my students. And it would take a really long time to do anything. It was quite time involved, believe it or not. And the drawings didn't get a whole lot of you know, great recognition. Let's add one more detail here.
And we're going to start off with our box. So we're going to do some dark brown. Lay it up thin. We're going to go straight down. And I imagine if you, if you took all the time to build a bridge to come get to the top each time, then I would imagine that you would have built some kind of collection box. darker I think that's basically a finished painting. We're going to finish it off with signature. We'll go down in here. Grab some red. Red and brush thinner. Alright, that's everything for today.
Thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoy learning how to paint a coffee tree or really any kind of fruit tree at all. And I'll see you guys around next time.